presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Ray Milland and Elizabeth Scott in The Perfect Marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And so they were married and lived happily ever after. Well, most motion pictures, like most books and stories, end on that optimistic note. For a change, we're going to start our play in the middle of a happy marriage and carry on from there with some surprising happenings in Hal Wallace's new comedy, The Perfect Marriage. The ingredients of this union are a charming couple known as Dale and Maggie Williams, played tonight by Ray Milland and Elizabeth Scott, a perfect acting team for this romantic, uh, slightly zany saga. I suppose we all have different ideas of what makes a perfect marriage. To a woman, it might be a husband, well, who never forgets an anniversary. And to a man... It might well be a wife who never forgets her looks and grooming, which, of course, means Lux Soap for complexion care. And while I won't go quite so far as to claim that Lux Soap guarantees a perfect marriage, I'm sure a lovely Lux complexion can contribute to romance, as many of you ladies must have discovered for yourselves. It's playtime as we bring you Paramount's The Perfect Marriage, starring Ray Milland and Elizabeth Scott in, well, let's say the title role. Our curtain rises on Act One. After ten years of married life, Dale and Maggie Williams are the happiest couple in town. Tonight is their tenth wedding anniversary, and is the living room of their lovely home crowded with celebrating friends and relations? No, it is not. Dale and Maggie are observing the occasion all by themselves. Oh, it's so wonderful, Dale. I mean, you're wanting to be alone with me tonight. I mean, after ten years. Ten wonderful, glorious years. Are you sure you wouldn't rather have a great big repulsive party with your mother and father and my mother and father and all our friends and... Oh! Maggie, what is it? Oh, my back. It's my back oh, again. Sit down, sweetheart. I'll rub oh, it for you. Oh, Dale, of all times for my back to act up again. Now, just relax, dear. Oh. I'm possibly the best masseur on the eastern seaboard. Oh. Oh, darling, you're a genius. It feels better already. Good. Oh, you must be so bored with my aching back. Bored? It's a funny word to use. Hmm? Well, unless you are. Oh, not in the least. Why do you ask? Oh, I was just thinking about tonight. I, I mean, you and I by ourselves. I, I thought maybe some little place with a rumber band and captain. Well, of course, darling, and... if this seems dull to you. Oh, no, no. But if you want to go out, I mean, it's perfectly all right with me. I... Dale, do you want to go out? Uh, no. Neither do I. Good. Now, give me a kiss. Oh, darling. <sighs> Cookie, I thought you went to bed long ago. But I'm cold. I think you can get warm in five minutes? I'll certainly try. This is kind of a special night, isn't it, Mommy? We. Oui, that's French. Natch, that's not French. Remember last year, Daddy? You and Mommy told me about when you met. I want to hear it again. Cookie, it's way past your bedtime. Please, Daddy? Please, Daddy? Uh-huh. Well, now, let's see. About ten and a half years ago, your grandma and grandpa Haggerty and I decided to get rid of that old farmhouse in the country and buy a beautiful little Pennsylvania Dutch affair up the road. Well, it seems your father had the same idea. I got there first. They didn't buy it, and I did. Cookie, I think you ought to know that the first time I saw your future father, I hated him. Intensely. Yes, Cookie, intensely. Anyway, a few weeks later, when Gil was visiting us... He was your mother's ex-flame, Cookie, a goop. A very handsome and intelligent man, Take my word for it, Cookie, a goop. Anyway... Grandpa Haggerty came rushing in and said the Williams place was on fire. Oh, Cookie, it was a moment of supreme and ecstatic joy to your dear mother. But why? Because she hated me, Cookie, and she loved watching my $20,000 house blazing merrily away. Oh, 
I was working like a Trojan cookie, absolutely exhausted, trying desperately to put out the blazing inferno single-handed. But what about Mommy? Well, I didn't pay any attention to her until the water ran out, and then I had to turn and see her grinning with delight. So I staggered over to her, and I said... How happy can you get, he said. And your mother said, I'm awfully sorry, but after all, you can always sell the embers for charcoal. And then your father said, I don't suppose you were sneaking around here with a gasoline torch, or were you? Whereupon, your mother seized a bucket of water and dumped it on me. And Gil the Goop just stood there, laughing at his hearty baritone... I'd have knocked his teeth out, but he ran away. He saw I was leaving Cookie, and being a gentleman, he wouldn't dream of letting me go home alone. But should you have left Daddy, Mommy? Ah, but I wasn't your Daddy then, Cookie. I was just a cold, damp, homeless youth. Well, your Grandpa Haggerty came to the rescue and invited me to spend the night at his place. And as if the fire wasn't enough, I was told to share the guest room with the goop. That, of course, was ridiculous. So I went downstairs to find something to eat. I happened to be in the kitchen, Cookie, eating a sandwich, playing solitaire, and having a big rage about our latest house guest. Well, I made it known that I was hungry, and your mother, with her customary lack of graciousness, pointed to the icebox, and I finally found an old, tired chicken leg. You should have taken your chicken leg and gone back to bed. Yeah, but I couldn't bear to see the way you were butchering that game of solitaire. Didn't you ever see a solitaire played before, Mr. Williams? Uh, never like this, Miss Haggerty. How about the red seven on the black eight? I have eyes. I was just going to do it. Mm. You were also going to put the deuce of diamonds on the ace? Certainly I was going to put the deuce of diamonds on the ace. Well, don't. It happens to be the ace of hearts. Look, I'll show you a much better game. Now, you make 13. If you think you're going to run me out of here before I finish my sandwich, you're crazy. I'm not interested in your sandwich. Now, the idea of this game is to make 13. The king is 13, you see? And a queen and the ace are 13. A 10 and a 3. I can count. Maggie. What? Maggie, I'm in love with you. Is that when it happened? Uh Uh-huh. That's when it happened. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear about it. Good night, Mommy. Good night, Cookie. Good night, Daddy. Good night, honey. No story. Now, go ahead, scram. You know, she's spoiled, Maggie. Oh, not really. You know, I don't think I'm very good with Cookie. Why, she adores you, Dale. And I adore you, and I have a lot of very private things to say to you. Oh, Dale, I want to hear each and every one of them. I... Oh, the door buzzer. Oh, let it buzz. Oh, but we can't. Why not? Oh, we just can't. It might be important. I told Paris to cable me as soon as the Molino show was over. You and that fashion magazine. Now, if you just quit your job... Company, darling, Addison and Mabel and Gloria. Oh, we're not intruding, Dale. Oh, we are delighted. Hello, uh, darling. Hiya. Isn't it sweet of them to surprise us like this? Yes, isn't it? We decided not to have a party. Now they've arrived, so we're going to have a party. Oh, really, Dale? You know how people misunderstand your sense of humor. Well, I don't. The man's asking us to get out in a perfectly nice, tactless way. Oh, no, no. Sit down, put your feet up, take your shoes off. The evening's young. <laughs> oh, darling, I love you. You're so funny. Mm-hmm. That funny he is. Well, I always say, what are your friends for if not to share your happiness? <laughs> well, now, wasn't that a pleasant little chat? And how the evening has flown by. All right, we'll go. Come on, Mabel. Oh, please, Addison, don't be mad. Dale and I just have the idea of being alone tonight. That's all. Well, I can't think what two people who've been married for ten years could possibly have to say to each other. We mustn't judge others by ourselves, my love. Come on, Gloria, we'll go someplace and get fractured. I'll see you to the door. Don't bother. We know our way Oh, no trouble at all. I'm so glad you stopped by. Dale? Hmm? It's after twelve. Mm-hmm. Oh, I must have dozed off. Oh, our evening started off so beautifully. Yes, yes, it did, until your friends barged in. My friends? Anyway, it was perfectly obvious you didn't want to be alone at all. Well, I practically threw them out of the house. You protested too much. You overdid it. Well, you clung to them like a life preserver. I was merely trying to be polite. And if there's something on your mind, There's Dale... nothing on my mind except a desire to stop this bicker... Well? Darling, you look beautiful. Oh, thanks, darling. It's the negligee. Oh, it's ravishing. Is it new? Is it new? You gave it to me this morning for our anniversary. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have good taste, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, you haven't said anything about your robe. Oh, but darling, it's much too good for me. Your judgment is always impeccable. Dale, it, it, it wasn't my judgment. I cheated. 
cheated? Well, we've been so terribly busy at the office, I, I just had to get help. Help? Yes, dear. Your father and my father, they picked it out. Oh. But, but you've been busy, too, and yet you found time to buy me this gorgeous negligee and the bracelet and the... Darling. Yes, darling? Well, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, my mother found the negligee and your mother found the bracelet. Oh, I see. Well, don't be so tragic about it. You did the same thing. Only I told you. Well, I told you. The point is you didn't want to tell me. Apparently you were afraid to. Now, let's don't make a whole big thing out of it. Very well, let's be completely frank. Dale, I loathe your mother buying my anniversary gift. Your mother went with her. Incidentally, you're extremely self-conscious about your mother. My mother? Really, Dale, if we're going to talk about mothers, yours has hated me from the time we got married. Well, I never exactly crept into your mother's little heart. At least my mother's never interfered. Never interfered? Never. Ha! I can give you a hundred examples of her interference. Give me one, just one. All right. Your job in the magazine. Didn't she insist on your keeping it? So that's it. You want me to quit my job? Oh, now stop it, Maggie. <gasps> oh, Lord, Maggie, Maggie, what's happened? We were so happy before. We're, we're just no good at sustaining a mood, I guess. We've sustained one for ten years. Love and trust and... Oh, darling, why are you crying? Because it just isn't true, Dale. We're not telling the truth, and, and you know it. But I love you. But you're not in love with me. Well, are you? Well, how can you say that? Well, I I haven't really cared either. Not lately. What did you say? I said, I haven't really cared, and you haven't really cared. You're right, darling. I haven't cared. I'm glad that's over. Very glad indeed. Hmm. Oh, Dale, there must be lots of thoughts milling around your head, like what's happened to us. How could it? What has it? Oh, now, look, we have everything, you and I. Security, a nice home, and a fine child. We have wonderful jobs. Why, we have everything. But there was a time there when you'd come home and I'd hear your key in the lock and, and the blood would rush to my head. Doesn't rush anymore, huh? No, Dale. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. And why not? Why not? There's no answer. Oh, but there must be. We must have made lots of mistakes. For one thing... We've allowed ourselves to become highly intimate acquaintances who share nothing but a roof. I refuse to discuss this any longer. We'll talk about it in the morning. This can't be put off. Then. I refuse to alter the whole course of my life in a minute and a half. Good night, ma'am. If you think I'm going to leave this unsettled, you're very much mistaken. My new robe. Her father. His mother. I'll never wear this negligee again. Never. <laughs> Why, Mother Haggerty, this is a very pleasant surprise. Surprise, my foot. Huh? Dale, it's Sunday morning. You know perfectly well that your mother and I always stop by before church every Sunday oh, morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Dale, you just came out of the study, didn't you? Well? Oh, you needn't look so guilty. Cookie just told me. Told you what? That you slept in the study all night. Well, as a matter of fact, I did. Why? Well, because... Well, Maggie suspected she was getting a cold, and with my sinuses, well, naturally, we decided not to take any chances. Mm. Maggie upstairs? Yes, I believe she is. Excuse me. Your son's in the living room, Cora. Dale? Oh, good morning, Mother. Dale, you don't look at all well. Well, I'm fine, and you look fine, too. You're haggard and preoccupied. Oh, nonsense. You and Maggie should go away for a nice, long vacation. I can remember when your father and I... Oh, but you couldn't leave, could you? Maggie couldn't possibly quit that magazine. But of course she could. Why, if I wanted her now, to... Now, see here, Dale. She... I've just been talking to Cookie. Do you know what that child told me? She said that love... And it's no use trying to pretend, Maggie. Your marriage is falling apart, isn't it? Oh, Mother, please. I always told you he wasn't right for you, but no, you wouldn't listen to me. Now you can see what's happened. Oh, but darling, nothing's happened. I've got eyes. If you'd married Gil... But I didn't marry Gil. I married Dale. And if I never see Dale again in my entire life, I've had ten of the most wonderful years in the world. Now, is that a good enough answer for you? <laughs> Very well, Maggie. And it's a good thing I'm not an interfering mother. If I were an interfering mother, I'd not... <laughs> you can relax, Dale. We're gone. 
Well, what did your mother say? She thinks you dominate me. Mine was fascinating, too. I told my mother you had a cold, and because of my sinuses... That was my story, too. See? We've been together so long, we even tell the same lies. <laughs> that must mean something, Maggie. Do you suppose, Mrs. for instance, Williams. that... Oh, good morning, Rosa. Breakfast ready, Mrs. Williams. Cookie's had hers long ago. I'd sure appreciate it if you eat quick. We'll go right in, Rosa. It's Rosa's day off, Dale. Maggie, I... Well, let's talk in the dining room. Very well, but I know just what you're going to say. Let's forget the whole business. Mm, I guess you want to talk. I certainly do. You also wouldn't mind just a touch of a scene. With a bit of sobbing, too. I got little country sausages, Mr. Williams. Just coffee for me, Rosa, please. Pop's on the table. Don't know why I bother to cook. Do you think I ought to go in there and make peace with Rosa? You'd like to, wouldn't you? It would postpone our little talk. Oh, Dale, last night you and I faced something most married people wouldn't dare to face. Let's go on with it. Let's shed all the lies that husbands and wives tell each other. I haven't told you any lies. Well, I've lied to you hundreds of times. I don't believe you. I don't believe you either. Oh, Dale, what are we saying? What are we doing to each other? Well, whatever it is, it's slightly horrible. Oh, but we mustn't. We just mustn't. Well, I'm glad you're coming to your senses, darling. My senses? What about your senses? All right. Mine, too. Oh, you were so right. We still have so many good things together. We do, don't we? Oh, let's try. Let's try with everything we've got. Everything. Darling, the first thing tomorrow, I'm going to buy Gloria Adams something really expensive. What did you say? Gloria, I was half awake the night thinking about us. And that made me think of Gloria. Look, I guess I'm not very bright, well, darling, but I... Well, don't you see, Dale, if, if anything happened between us, I, I'd be just like Gloria. Well, is that bad? She's pretty? Is swell job? Boyfriend? Gloria's been married twice, Dale. Twice. Sure, she's pretty. But she's getting older every day, just like I am. Oh, she dresses beautifully, but she told me why herself. She said she has to. It's her last resort. All this talk about the attractiveness of the modern independent woman in her 30s, well, it just isn't true. Well, if Gloria's made you realize all this, maybe I'd better send her something, too. Oh, yes, darling, please do. Oh, I just couldn't bear being in her shoes. I wouldn't let you be. No, don't ever let me be, will you? Never. <laughs> Women are certainly funny. Why? Well, they haven't the same strength as men. They haven't the same ability to cope with the world. It's obvious, really, isn't it? Huh? Well, I, I don't think it's as obvious as all that. Well, look, wait a minute. Women over 30, like you and Gloria, it's the plain truth you have less of a chance of getting what you want than I have of getting what I want. And that's not fair. You see what I mean, don't you? Well, I think I'm beginning to. Why, I couldn't bear to think of you all alone without me. Cookie growing up and making it tougher for you each year to get a husband. After all, how many men want a woman with a child? Very few. You see? We'd be living in a sort of high-toned misery, all dressed up and no place to go. I wonder if you realize what you're saying. The truth. I'm being honest. That's what you said you wanted me to be. The soundest thing you can do is to hang on to what you've got. Oh, is it? Excuse me a moment. Fine time to make a phone call. None better. Whom are you calling? I'm calling Addison. Give him my love. Tell him... Addison, this is Maggie. May Dale and I come over this hey, afternoon? Hey, wait a minute. No, Addison, it's, it's about business. You're a lawyer, and we want to get a divorce. Give me that phone, Addison. Be quiet. We'll be there at 2.30, Addison. Thanks. Have you gone crazy? When I want charity, Dale, I'll go to the proper government authority. Maggie, what do you want? You heard me. I want a divorce. <laughs> In a moment, we'll be back with Act Two of The Perfect Marriage. And how's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter tonight? Oh, pretty excited, Mr. Keeley. You see, the picture my husband directed has been chosen to open the government's new security loan drive in New York State. The premiere is to be at the Winter Garden in New York on Wednesday night. Admission by bond only. Well, that's an honor indeed for Universal International's new picture, Are You With It? A story built around the colorful life of a carnival. With Donald O'Connor and Olga San Juan heading the cast. Any carnival that has Donald O'Connor as its star performer ought to be a hit. As a dancer, he's in a class by himself. He's a magnificent comedian, too. I should think Olga San Juan was a happy choice as his teammate. Oh, yes, she's delightful. 
Tiny, vivacious, and so attractive. It must have been fun those, to see those two go through their paces. Well, we saw some amazing footwork. Some of the dances certainly were strenuous, too. I know John Kennedy will be pleased when I tell him what an important role the new bath size Lux toilet soap played in Are You With It? How do you mean, Libby? Well, Olga San Juan told me she used to look forward to a refreshing bath after those dance routines. It was a real luxury, she said, to have the big bath size cake of Lux toilet soap in her dressing room. Screen stars are certainly enthusiastic about the new bath size Lux toilet soap. And rightfully so. You get such a lot of creamy, fragrant lather with that generous big cake. It was specially created to make a Lux soap beauty bath more luxurious than ever. Screen stars love the delicate perfume it leaves on the skin. The same famous fragrance that reminds me of a garden of spring flowers. It's easy to identify the new bath size Lux toilet soap. It comes in the same familiar sampler wrapper. And here's a tip for the ladies. Why not let your husband enjoy that generous bath cake? Men go for the rich, creamy Lux soap lather, you know. In fact, you'll find the whole family will appreciate it for a shower or bath. The new bath size Lux toilet soap is at your dealer's now. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Presenting Act Two of The Perfect Marriage, starring Ray Milland as Dale Williams and Elizabeth Scott as Maggie. Well, it's a few hours later, and Dale and Maggie have just arrived at the home of their friend, Addison Garrett, attorney. I, I can't believe it. You two wanting a divorce? I, I'm simply appalled. Let's keep it impersonal, Addison. Yes, just be legal, please. Well, in that case, have you thought of any financial arrangement? I don't want one penny from Dale. Addison, look. Maggie gets half of everything I have or ever will have. Is that clear? I won't hear of it. Oh, you have a child. Maggie, you've given Dale ten years of your life. Dale has given me ten years of his life. Oh, this is disgusting. I'm not going to listen to a lecture. I get a lawyer who's not sentimental. Get one for me, too. Oh, sit down, both of you. Now, look here, Addison. Shut up and sit down. I went through bloody murder one night because of you, remember? No. Then I'll remind you. It was about nine years ago. Maggie was in the hospital. I don't see any occasion to bring up anything. I do. We were waiting in the corridor, you and I. We've been waiting something like 14 hours. When that doctor walked up to us, you turned white. You'll have to operate, Dale. I don't want to, but frankly, we must. I have your permission... There's a chance, Dale. Whatever you think best. Try not to worry, son. Dale, don't look like that. Maggie's going to be all right. I know it. I feel it. I'm not quite sure I know what's happening. I can only tell you that if something happens to Maggie, it'll happen to me. She's my heart, Edison, and my eyes and my hands. I've no intention of doing without her. known a man who loved a woman as you love Maggie. Well, you're both crazy. I'm as strong as an ox. And as stubborn. Well, what did you expect of Dale? Naturally, he was distressed and unhappy. He's a human being. Thank you, Maggie. But what happened nine years ago has nothing to do with today, Dale. Absolutely nothing. Now, let me tell you something about Maggie. Dale, you remember before the war you were working on those medium bombers? Well... Addison, don't you dare. Well, Maggie called me one afternoon. Very nervous and tears. I was nothing of the kind. She said you were going to make a test flight. Blind flying with radar and some special gadget for skip bombing. She was convinced they were going to bring you back in assorted pieces. But she insisted on going down to the airport. Oh, why doesn't he come down? He's been up there for 20 minutes. Well, it was your idea to come out and watch got to promise me something, Addison. You've got to. If anything happens to Dale, you and Mabel, you'll look after Cookie, won't you? Oh, you're just being hysterical. I, I'm just telling you I, I couldn't live without him. Not a fraction of a second. Well, pull yourself together. He's coming in. Well, then let's get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. Don't you want to stay and see him? Oh, but Dale must never know. I've been here and promised me, Addison. You'll never tell him. Never. All right. I promise. <laughs> Sorry my flying upset you so. Well, it was your job, and I was hysterical, I suppose. I hate machines. Shall we get back to the property settlement? You don't have to be so legal, I Always think. thinking about business. Why couldn't we settle this in your office sometime? Well, maybe we could even settle it by ourselves. Dale! Maggie! I didn't know you were here. Oh, hello, Mabel. 
They're here on business, Mabel. But that's silly. What business? Personal business, darling. Well, for five minutes, it can wait. I simply have to have Maggie's advice about my mink coat. Oh, really, I... Come on, Maggie. The boys can talk business while I show you my coat. Know what I think? What? I think my wife's been listening at that door ever since you got here. (laughs) Women. You said it. Women. And I couldn't help overhearing, darling. Oh, you poor, poor thing. Mabel, please. Of course, I've suspected it for months. But I never dreamed it would reach this stage. When did you find out about Gloria? Gloria? Well, certainly, Dale and Gloria. Will you kindly explain what Gloria has to do with all this? But, darling, but... I thought you knew. I thought it was the reason for the divorce. I Mabel, thought... I know you're trying to be a friend, but you sound like a nice, well-meaning rattlesnake. What about Gloria? Look, last summer, when you went to see Cookie and Camp, your husband had dinner every night in a very obscure restaurant. Maybe he liked the cooking there. And maybe he liked Gloria there. So they had dinner together. What of it? This of it. They skulked, they giggled, they whispered together. How do you know? I saw them. Addison saw them. Sheila Jameson saw them. The Riley saw them. Even Thanks the... a lot, Mabel. I'm going home. Maggie, why did you rush away from Addison's like that? Because I chose to. Besides, we told Cookie we'd take her to the park for a pony ride. Where is she? Changing her dress. Maggie, how about us? I thought after what Addison said... I'll admit that... I weakened for a moment, but my mind's made up, Dale. Okay. What happens now? Do I move out? When it's convenient. What about Cookie? If it's possible for a child to understand these things, she'll understand. Well, what about our families? You can't get a divorce and not tell people about it. There are no certain places where a mild cheer will go up. So do I. Incidentally, we invited Gloria for dinner tonight. When do we do that? Oh, last week, remember? I'm afraid I won't be able to join you. Well, I'm not going either. Huh? All right, I will. It'll be a relief to get out of this house. When you do go, for good, I mean, take all the furniture that you picked out, including that loathsome lamp. That lamp happens to be a superb 19th century bisque figure. So you told me. However, you don't like anything unless it's shocking pink and drips with tassels. Well, let's hope your next will have a more simple taste. You're going to shop around, aren't you? I mean, you're not going to grab the first one who makes eyes at you. I'm going to play the field. Oh, good. Oh, good, good. Of course, at first, they won't notice those smug, self-satisfied wrinkles that are clustering around your eyes, my middle-aged friend. And you, I suppose, are Venus. Coming home at the end of a big, important day at that magazine, putting commas and semicolons into a treatise on how to convert a horse blanket into an ermine wrap. Your hair all straggly, squawking about your dreary little problems. Well, at last it's out. Your real opinion of me and my job. Oh, you're a part-time businesswoman, a part-time wife, and a part-time mother. I should have done that long ago. Hmm. Now, if you excuse me, I'll I'll see what's keeping cooking. Ponies are this way, Mommy. Cookie, who's that little girl you just spoke to? Lola Greenan. She goes to my school. She in her white fur coat. Her father gave her that white fur coat. Not hinting, are you, sweetheart? She makes her father give her presents because he has to keep in good with her. He does? Well, Lola's mother and father are divorced, like Nancy's mother and father. And Lola's father once bought her a beautiful genuine imitation pearl necklace that cost $10. I certainly wish I had a genuine imitation pearl necklace. Listen, are all your friends' parents divorced, for heaven's sake? Well, you're not getting any imitation pearl necklace, my friend. And you wouldn't get one even if we were divorced. Oh, yes, I would. You'd have to stand good with me, too. Now, listen to me, young lady. Even if your mother and I didn't live together, nothing would be altered. Nothing. Mommy, are you and Daddy getting a divorce? Uh, What makes you think that? I don't know, but it sounds just like the way Lola's mother and father told her. They said, if this and if that. Then a week later, it wasn't if anymore. Darling, you're... Your daddy and I will... Well, sometimes something happens. You don't want them to happen, Cookie. They just do. You are then, aren't you? Well, I... Yes, Cookie, we are. Well, I I might as well take that pony ride as long as we're here. We'll stand right here and watch you, darling. 
Aunt Dale, we mustn't ever let it spoil anything for her. We'll do our best. Maggie, I I think I'll run along. Maybe you'd better. See you later? Of course. Give my best to Gloria. Sorry I'm a little late, Dale. Been waiting long? Still on my first martini. Well, this is nice. Very nice. Table for two. Where's Maggie? Uh, she's not coming. And I didn't believe it. Well, I still don't. Believe what? I'm late because I had a couple of phone calls. Some of our uh, dearest friends say you and Maggie have had quite an argument. Some of our dearest friends are right. Then why the surprised look? Because the only ones who know about it are Addison and Cookie. And I hardly think that either of them is publicity conscious. You forget Addison is married to Mabel. Mabel? Well, what did she say? Oh, Mabel didn't call me. It was Julia Camberwell. And do you know who called her? Maggie's mother and your father. Fine. I, um, I said I had two calls. Remember Maggie's boyfriend from a way back? Not the goop. It was Gil, all right. He's still single and still interested in Maggie. He wanted confirmation. And Maggie's phone number. Uh, well, it's too bad Maggie isn't home. She took Cookie to the movies. Dale, what happened? Whatever it was, surely you'll patch it up. Well, suppose we don't. That bad, huh? Well, then you'll both go through that rehabilitation process. Will you help? How exactly? Oh, I don't know. Except that I seem to have got my appetite back. That's a good sign. Dale, uh, I'm scared. Suddenly, I don't want to have dinner. Look, when it's over, when it's really, honest to goodness, 100% over, give old Dr. Gloria a ring. Meanwhile, I'm disappearing. Thanks. Sorry, pal. Don't take any wooden divorces. Hello? Is Mrs. Williams at home? No, Mrs. Williams isn't at home. Now, this is Mr. Cummings, Gil Cummings. Who's this? This is Mr. Williams, Dale Williams. That's funny, I didn't expect you to be there. Well, I happen to live here. Then maybe you know when Maggie will be home. I have no idea what time Mrs. Williams will be home. You mind if I call again? Not at all. No business of mine who my wife wants to talk to in the middle of the night. That overgrown rover boy, I'd like to kick the... You better run... Run straight wanna... to bed, Cookie, darling. I want to say goodnight to Daddy. Well, Daddy isn't here, honey. Daddy's here. Oh, she has to go right to bed, Dale. Can't I talk with my mother and father while they're still together? Well, brush your teeth and Daddy and I will be in to say goodnight. Okay, I'll call when I'm ready. Ah, uh, poor Cookie. Yes, poor Cookie. Maggie? Now, look, Dale, please don't start it all over again. I'm just trying to tell you that Gil Cummings called. Well... When did he get into town? I haven't any idea. Where's he staying? I never thought to ask him, but he's going to call back. Uh, did you have a nice time with Gloria? Excellent, thank you. Oh, that's nice. She's such good company, isn't she? Why did you talk to me and Daddy? I always do, don't I? But you won't be anymore. Cookie, darling, we know this is awfully tough for you, and, and we're truly sorry, but it just can't be helped, that's all. Why can't it? Look, look, the circus is coming soon. Why don't we get all your friends and have a great big party, huh? I don't like the circus. Well, we we could go away for Christmas vacation, go ice skating, tobogganing. I don't know how to ice skate. Well, you could learn. No, I don't think so. Uh, you know something? I've been thinking about that genuine imitation pearl necklace. You have? Now, if you're a good girl, I'll get it for you. Thanks, Daddy. Daddy? Yes, darling? Couldn't you try? I have tried. Believe me, I've tried. Well, couldn't you try a little harder? Yes, I could try a little harder. Sleep well, darling. Maggie? Yes? I want to talk to you. Oh, sorry, I'm in an awful hurry. Gil just phoned. Oh, well, come on in. We're going to the Mayfair Club. Oh? Well, why the evening gown? Oh, well, I thought it would be gala. After all, I haven't seen Gil for ages. Well, there's no need to get done up like a burlesque soubrette. Uh, tell me, dear, did you send Gloria yellow orchids tonight? I hope not. 
They go so bad with her complexion. What are you talking about? Well, don't tell me you took her out all the, to dine all those other times and didn't send her flowers. I can explain all that. Why bother? It's all perfectly innocent. Oh, what a... Maggie. Pity. Well? Uh, don't go out with that goop. Now, Dale, let's try not to embarrass each other, shall we? As your husband, I ask that you stay home. I will not have a scene. Okay. Okay. Now, if you'll get away from the door, I'd like to see you. Is it all fixed, Mommy? You and Daddy? No, darling. I'm afraid it isn't. But Daddy said he was going to try. Oh, Cookie, you can't try to love someone. Either you do or you don't. But you used to love him once, didn't you? Of course. Then how could you stop? I couldn't stop loving you or Daddy no matter what. Oh, rats. Oh, Cookie, please try to go to sleep. Think about all the nice things you'd like to have. I don't want anything. Well, what about a... a Genuine imitation pearl necklace. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a strand of mine and made it especially for you. How's that? Oh, boy. And remember that I love you, and so does Daddy, and nothing in this world will ever change or harm that. Good night, darling. Dale. I'm on the phone. Oh. Well, I just felt like talking to you, Gloria. Well... A hundred percent on the level, no fooling over. Good night, Dale. Good night. Hmm? Oh, no, I was just saying good night to Maggie. Look, I have a wonderful idea. If you can be ready in about half an hour... Maggie! Well, for goodness sake, what are you doing standing here at the curb? And alone? My well, mother Williams and father Williams. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to hail a taxi cab. Maggie, uh, we've heard some rumors. I, I don't know what's happened, but... This is absurd. Well, I should have thought you'd be hanging out flags. Oh, taxi! Taxi! Maggie, for years I thought I didn't approve. I was wrong. I can't imagine Dale without you. Don't leave him, Maggie, please. I'm awfully sorry, but I've got to. Where to, lady? The Mayfair Club driver. Come on, Cora. Hurry up. Why? When a woman is dressed up like that, anything can happen. I'm going to follow her. Well, well, Mother and Father Haggerty, good evening. On your way somewhere, Dale? I am. Dale, where's Maggie? Maggie's at the Mayfair Club and with your favorite man, Mother Haggerty, the one you always hoped she'd marry instead of me. This is heartbreaking for me, Dale. Yes, and I'm sorry, because you've always been a right guy, Pop. Can't say the same about you, though, Mother. What? Well, I'll be seeing you, I'm afraid. Oh, Peter, well, do something. Taxi! We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of The Perfect Marriage. Our guest tonight is the talented Paramount actress, Miss Carol Matthews. Famous as Miss Chicago a few years ago, she passed the Hollywood screen test with flying colors. But that was only the beginning, wasn't it, Carol? Indeed it was, Mr. Keeley. Having just graduated from high school, I'd had no acting experience. So I went to drama school and worked as a nightclub entertainer to earn my tuition. Eventually, I started my own radio show. Then came roles at the Pasadena Playhouse. And at last, what I wanted most of all... A studio contract. Looking back on your experience, I'm sure you'd do it all over again. Oh, yes. Being in pictures is never dull. Even now, I get a thrill watching a big production being filmed, especially when it has two such famous stars as Veronica Lake and Joan Caulfield. Ah, you're speaking of the Sainted Sisters. Paramount's new comedy with that wonderful actor, Barry Fitzgerald. He takes a hand in shaping the lives of the Sainted Sisters, doesn't he? Yes. And Veronica Lake and Joan Caulfield are cast as a pair of very clever uh, clever gold diggers. But as you know, Mr. Keeley, Barry Fitzgerald reforms them. A delightful task, I'm sure. Am I right, John Kennedy? Yes, I take on the job any time. Two lovely blondes, two lovely Lux girls. Indeed they are, Mr. Kennedy. Veronica Lake and Joan Caulfield both have such lovely fair skin. Naturally, they depend on Lux soap care. It's a proven beauty care. 
In recent tests of Lux soap by skin specialists, actually three out of four complexions became lovelier in a short time. Lux soap facials certainly work for me. I discovered that long ago. I'm really grateful for a beauty care that's so simple and so effective. Thank you, Miss Carol Matthews. Nine out of ten screen stars recommend this gentle care. So here's a beauty tip for clever women everywhere. Why not try fragrant white Lux toilet soap for your precious complexion? See what quick new loveliness Hollywood's own beauty soap gives your skin. We return you now to William Keeley. It's time for the third act of The Perfect Marriage, starring Ray Milland as Dale Williams and Elizabeth Scott as Maggie. During the last half hour, there's been a steady stream into the Mayfair Club of members of the Williams family. First came Maggie on the arm of a beaming, self-assured gentleman named Gil Cummings. Then came Dale and Gloria, followed by Mr. Williams Sr., and now by Maggie's father. As yet, there's been no consolidation of the clan. Marvel, it's been ages since we've done anything like this, hasn't it, Gil? All the time I've been saving words to tell you. Maggie, you're going to marry me or I'll beat you over the head with a baseball bat. You should have done that years. Oh. What's the matter? Look over there. That's Dale, isn't it? Put on a lot of weight, huh? Hey, he's with Gloria. Do me a favor, Gil. Let's not even look at him. Look at him, Gloria. Maggie and the goop. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they go in Dutch treat. You knew they were going to be here. Yeah. You just can't bear to have Maggie out of your sight. Yeah, I'm just curious, it's all. I don't know why I put up with you. Because we are pals. I've got news for you, chum. I'll be practically anything except a pal. Come on, let's go somewhere else. One dance and then we leave, huh? One dance. Okay. One dance and then we leave. Well, well, well. What are you doing here, Mr. Haggerty? Hello, Mr. Williams. I hope you don't think that I've been following anybody. Why, no, certainly not. Well, nothing's happened yet. I simply don't know what to make of it. It's fantastic. Haggerty, we must make every sacrifice to prevent this catastrophe. Absolutely right. Thank you. Now then, two people have separated. What will bring them together again? Well, their common interests. Cookie, for instance. Now, I once saw a movie in which the little girl got terribly sick, and the father oh, and mother... Oh, horseradish. Cookie's the healthiest child in town. Now, I've got an idea. You'll recall that my son and your daughter met at a fire. Well? Well, if we were to burn their house up, uh, just slightly, that is, uh, you don't think... Williams! Cookie happens to live in that house. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Look at him, dancing. Your son and that woman. No, they've stopped dancing. They're at Maggie's table. They're talking to them. And do you and Dale come here often, Gloria? Hardly ever, darling. Usually Dale hides me in a little saloon in the Bowery. Suppose we just get down to cases. Dale, Maggie and I are going to get hitched just as soon as she unloads you. And in your simple language, my simple friend, Gloria and I are also going to get married. I could use a drink if nobody cares. Well, we'll all have a drink. Let's have a party. Oh, I'm afraid that won't fit in with Maggie's plans. Oh, on the contrary, I can think of nothing more intelligent. There are uh, so many things you ought to know about your fiancé, Gloria. Why, thank you. I could give this character a few tips, too. Uh, I don't want to be nasty, Dale. But can you tell me why your father followed me here? He probably came because your father followed me. I will not be spied upon. Well, we have a house, haven't we? Well, yes, but... Besides, Gil would like to see the place, wouldn't you, Gil? I certainly would. All right, let's go. Well, I certainly don't like this room, Maggie. We'll do it all over, Gil. That lamp, though. Boy, I sure like that lamp. Sorry, old man, but Gloria and I are going to do a whole room around it. A huge informal cottagey room. You know Dale, darling. Chintzy. Dale hates chintzy rooms. I intend to like them very much. Oh, no, not you. He never changes, Gloria. Maggie, on the other hand, always changes. Tell me, Gil, did you ever catch Maggie with a backache? 
We never had time for backaches. Well, you'll have plenty of time now. Besides, we think that Maggie's backaches are just a great big fib that we use as a weapon. That's what we think. Maggie's had a weak back as long as I've known her. Well, you're going to have all you can do running out to Dale with a bottle of synephrine. A bottle of what? Synephrine. Dale has sinus trouble. Didn't you know? Just keep thousands of bottles of synephrine all over the house. I'll give you a case for a wedding present. I'm giving Gil a whole barrel of toothpaste caps because Maggie doesn't believe in them. She also doesn't believe that anyone else is entitled to a blanket. Well, I have to have something to cover my ears against your snoring. She also talks in her sleep. I don't think you're being very nice, Dale. He isn't usually so frank. Most of the time, he's just moody and secretive and... What's the matter, honey? Be quiet. I think I heard Cookie crying. I'll go and see. Never mind, I'll go. But that's ridiculous. Let her cry. But you can't let her cry. The worst thing you can do for a child is pamper her. You gotta be tough with kids. How would you know? Skip it. She wasn't crying after all. If she were, I'd have heard her immediately. Anyway, Gil, raising children is simply a matter of understanding them. That's all. Then I wouldn't say you've done a very good job, darling. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? I think you dress Cookie outrageously. And when I have something to say about it... That would be the coldest day this world has ever known. Oh, oh, let's be serious. Surely Dale is going to have Cookie at least half the year. Certainly not. I don't intend to have her life split into two pieces. Good. You and I together, Maggie, can correct any false Cookie may have. Sometimes a good spanking is the entire answer to a problem child. Problem Problem child? child. All Gil means is that he and I can approach the problem without hysteria. Hysteria? If you'll kindly let me finish a sentence. I don't like any sentences you even begin about, Cookie. Well, good night, folks. Oh, now, wait a minute, Gloria. Wait, wait, I'm I'm sorry. Are you? Well, this is where I came in. And this is where I go out. Gloria, wait a minute, please. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, the happy couple. Oh, Gloria's much too pushy for Dale. Honey, the last person in the world I want to discuss now is your ex-husband's future wife. Not quite ex, darling, but soon. Maggie. Hmm? I've got you bad. I always have and I always will. You're sweet, Gil, really sweet. I could use a little concentration. I'm sorry, but there's Dale again. I hope you and Gloria kissed and made up, Dale. Oh, don't worry about us. There was a taxi out there, and Gloria was going to take it, but she couldn't. Your father was in there just sitting there. All alone? Well, no. My father was in it, too. <laughs> but you can bet your boots it was your father's idea. Even your own father doesn't trust you. Are you finished? No. I'm going to the study. I'm going to bed. Except they haven't any pajamas. The laundry's still in the kitchen. I'll get them for you. Well, Gil, that'll give you a rough idea of her housekeeping. We have a servant, of course, but Maggie won't trust her with the laundry. She keeps my pajamas in the oven. And incidentally, why don't you go home? Why don't you? Listen, chum, this is still my house, and my ground rules for visitors is two ack Emma. Why don't you get somebody to bounce me? I don't think I need any help. Care to try? I can think of nothing I'd like better. Here are your pajamas, Dale. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. How you ever put up with him for ten years? Oh, he used to be so gay and really very affectionate. He doesn't even know the meaning of the word. I'll show you what it really means. Oh, Gil, dear, please. Why not? Well, Dale, he's peeking at us from somewhere. I know he is. (laughs) But you've got to stop thinking about him, honey. That's all finished. Oh, of course it is. Then show me. Show me just how finished it is. All right, Gil, I... uh... I'm sorry to break this up, but my vitamins have disappeared. They're in the bathroom. They are not in the bathroom. Good heavens, I saw them there. Well, don't worry. I'll find them. Oh, now, look, simply because we're going to get a divorce is no reason for you to die of beriberi. Excuse me, Gil. (laughs) Vitamins. (laughs) He needs vitamins. (laughs) I told you they were here. Those are not the right vitamins. I don't take C. I take a B complex. You take C, G, H and X. I do not take X. Well, you'd better, the way you're losing your hair. I'll thank you to leave my hair out of this. Gloria will probably insist upon a toupee with a wave. Well, you don't have to worry about Gloria anymore. Oh, a lover's quarrel. Oh, oh, what a shame. Just a change of plans, that's all. Well, I haven't changed mine. I'm not interested. I am now going to bed. And I'm going to sleep like a baby. Why? Because I'm free. 
Frank Gill for me, will you? Well, did you find his vitamins? Certainly, they were right under his big nose. Honey, I've been thinking. As soon as we're married, we'll go to Yucatan. Yucatan? Maybe even as far as Chile. Did you ever go hunting for condor's eggs? Not that I recall. Oh, you'll love it. We'll stay away for months. But, but what about Cookie and what about my job? Oh, Cookie will go to a girl's school. As for your job, well, I'll write the letter of resignation myself. Now, you better go to bed, honey. You're tired out. Yes, I'm afraid I am a little. Dream about me, honey. About a bright, wonderful life with a guy who loves you like a fool. Oh, Gil, you make it sound so wonderful. So... <gasps> oh! What's the matter? Oh, it's, it's my back again. It's, it's out again. Well, well, what can I do? Uh, would, would you mind helping me into the bedroom? Helping you? Well, uh-huh. I'll just carry you in. Like this. Oh, Gil! Take it easy. Relax, honey. All you've got is a Charlie horse. No, no, it isn't a Charlie horse, Gil. It's... It's a chronic sensitivity. Nonsense. Oh. I'll have you like new in a jiffy. Just, just put me down, dear. I'll be all right now. Now, you run along. Now, not another word. I'm going to give you a massage. Now, here we go. Oh, Gil, please. I'm not the heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> Why, if I don't cure you in five oh, minutes? Oh, please, Gil, it hurts. Dale's the only one who knows how to massage me. <laughs> Dale? Uh-huh. Well, oh. uh... How's this? Well, it, it's a little gentler. Good. Now, by twisting your shoulder... Oh, I no, can... it's worse. Oh, you've made it worse. Maggie, Maggie, maybe I'd better get Dale. Oh, don't be ridiculous. But you just can't sit there groaning. I can if I want to, and I want to. Oh. I'm going to get Dale. No, no, don't you dare. You still here? Your wife's got a pain in her back. You sure it's not a pain in the neck? Well, are you going to do something about it? I don't know. Get out of that bed. You get inside and give Maggie a massage or I'll fracture your skull. I think you've convinced me. I wouldn't let you put a finger on me even if I were dying. Now, get out of here, both of you. How bad is it? No worse than usual. It'll pass. Maggie, I I really think you ought to let him try. Well, well, if you think so, dear. Go on, get to work. I can't concentrate with people breathing all over me. Now kindly wait outside. I'll do nothing of the kind. Maggie, tell your fiancé to get out. I am not going to let you stay here alone with my girl. Who happens to be my wife. That's just a technicality. Oh, Gil, do as he says. Wait outside, please. Well, okay, honey. But I'll be here if you need me. And shut the door. Oh, oh. oh, just go all limp, Maggie, and oh. just try to relax. Oh. How's oh. this? Huh? How is it's, this? It's good. Uh, it's good. Does it feel any better? Oh, yes, darling. You see, it's all... Oh. What did you say? Oh, sorry. It was a slip. Had it. You know what I'm going to miss most about you? The things I don't like. Oh? Like your aching back. And the way you have exactly a cup and a half of coffee. Oh, Dale, those things don't matter. Well, maybe they matter more than us silly in-laws. Oh, you're taking Gloria out to dinner. Oh, Dale, why didn't you tell me about Gloria? Because there was honestly nothing to tell. Honestly? Honestly. And stop squirming. You know, if I don't know... I, I don't know whether I'm in love with you or if I just plain like you. But I do know I'd hate not rubbing your back. Well... What about all the lies we've told each other, all the evasions? Aren't they important? Not very. Not nearly as important as all the truth, all the fun, all the heartache. And Cookie? Yeah, Cookie most of all. Ah, Turn around under your neck. (gasps) Oh, oh, that's wonderful. You ought to be a professional master. Ah, I wouldn't be any good with anybody else. Oh, I don't care. With me, you're wonderful. Simply wonderful. You know something? I always think you mean that. Oh, darling, I do. Of course I do. What was that? The goop, I hope. And my, my, he didn't even say goodnight. Hey, taxi. I want to go to the Biltmore Hope. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hopkinson. Mr. Williams, and and Mr. Haggerty. Hello, Gil. 
Hey, Williams, look. The light. The light just went out up there. Ah, at last. Now we can all go home. <laughs> curtain falls on the perfect ending for the perfect marriage. But that's not the end of our good fortune, for here are tonight's stars back to greet you as they are in real life, Ray Milland and Elizabeth Scott. Ray, every time you're on this program, it seems as if you're just back from a trip abroad. That's right, Bill. Last time it was England, this time South America. I understand you were there for the opening of New Paramount Theater, eh? Yes, in Lima, Peru. But I also had a chance to take some time off and relax. Which you deserve. Paramount put you through some pretty strenuous paces in your latest picture, The Big Clock. Yeah, Maureen O'Sullivan, too. She co-starred with me in the picture. Well, Maureen has a lovely face for it. And Charles Lawton gives you the work. Which just about winds things up. <laughs> but seriously, it was quite a thriller, Ray. And so is Elizabeth Scott's latest film for Hal Wallace. Well, it is indeed, but the name I Walk Alone is a little contradictory, isn't it? I've never seen Elizabeth Scott except surrounded by admirers. <laughs> Well, you see, I sing this film, Ray, and maybe that explains the title. On the contrary, Elizabeth. In my opinion, that's one of the high spots of the picture. That and a few more things, like brilliant talent and, uh, let's say, a lovely Lux complexion. Well, I won't deny, Bill, that Lux soap has done wonders for my complexion. I wouldn't be a day without it. And we wouldn't be a week without this theater, Bill. So let's hear what you've planned for Monday. Next Monday night, by popular demand... We're bringing our audience one of the great pictures of all time and casting it with two of the year's most exciting stars. Academy Award winner, Ronald Coleman, and another great Academy Award artist, Miss Greer Garson. Well, it would take a great picture for a team like that, Bill. What's the play? It's metro golden Bears immortal screenplay, Random Harvest. A powerful and haunting love story brought unforgettably to life by Greer Garson and Ronald Coleman. Well, that ought to be a high spot of the year for Lux, Bill. Many congratulations, and good night. Good night, good night and thanks for two very fine performances. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman and Greer Garson in Random Harvest. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies, here's a reminder. Did you know you can still get spot cash for the waste fats from your kitchen? Dealers pay well for every pound you turn in. Even if you reuse fats for cooking, there's always some left which can be salvaged and turned into your butcher. World supplies of industrial fats and oils are still far short of needs, and this situation will continue for some time to come. So please keep on salvaging all waste fat possible. You'll be doing your country a service. You'll be helping your food budget, too. Remember, spot cash for every pound you turn in. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Join us again next Monday night to hear Random Harvest with Greer Garson and Ronald Coleman. Pepsodent won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families throughout America compared new Pepsodent toothpaste with the brands they've been using at home. By an overwhelming average of three to one, they preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodent toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Random Harvest with Ronald Coleman and Greer Garson. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows him.